A woman sentenced to life in prison for murdering her roommate has had her conviction overturned because the prosecutors showed autopsy photos to the jury. In 2019, Carmi Nelson was convicted of murdering her roommate Jordan Lum in South Carolina. According to the prosecutor, she struck Lum in the head with a hammer and then stabbed her with a knife at least 19 times. Lum had more than 100 injuries. During the trial, prosecutors showed the jury the autopsy photos so the jury could see the wounds. Uh, and it's something prosecutors almost always do during a trial. I've seen it. They helps the jury understand and convict. It's never easy, but it happens a lot. Uh, but this time, it was the thing that got Nelson's murder conviction tossed. Yesterday, the South Carolina State Supreme Court ruled that the autopsy photos were too gruesome to show the jury. The ruling reads, in part, the admission of these excessively gruesome autopsy photos unnecessarily created the potential for the jury to convict Carmi of the murder based on inflamed emotions in a case where the jury was provided with undisputed evidence as to how victim died. We believe the medical examiner's testimony as to the victim's injuries could have properly established how victim was killed and that victim was killed with malice, negating the evidentiary value to be gained from the autopsy photos. Basically saying that just hearing about the injuries would have been enough and that the jury did not need to see uh, those photos. Let's bring in Dave Ehrenberg. He is the state attorney uh, in Palm Beach County, has tried a lot of uh, cases just like this one. Dave, I'm very, very curious. What do you make of this? I mean, I've never heard of such a thing. I thought that 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 juries got to see the autopsy photos no matter how gruesome. Good to be with you, Brian. Normally they can and do see these photos, but it's got to go to a part of the evidence to prove guilt in the case. Does it show that she committed the crime? Does it show malice? Those are crucial elements here. Well, you don't need these photos to show who committed the crime or that it was done with malice because you've got a testimony that said that the victim was stabbed 113 times. That shows malice. You've got two different weapons involved. There was a hammer and then a knife. And the uh, the defendant used the knife to slit the victim's throat. Um, you also have text messages from the defendant that showed malice. And you have her admissions that were recorded by her husband. So the court is saying that in this case, you had enough evidence to show who committed the crime and that malice existed so you can convict her of murder. And if you show those photos, it has a prejudicial effect where it can inflame the jury so much that it deprives the defendant of a fair trial. So they don't always show the autopsy photos? I mean, I feel like in, in the courtrooms in Palm Beach County, when I've covered a trials, I feel like you always see the autopsy photos. If it is used to prove an element of the crime. Like, for example, if you didn't have all the other stuff there um, and you had to show, well, uh, there, there was malice because look at all the blood. That shows someone who's really depraved. Uh, but mm. here, the only question for the jury was who committed the crime and was there malice? Well, it was overwhelming the evidence who committed the crime. It was the defendant. And then the question is, was there malice? And they had all this other evidence. And, you know, the court here said, well, you've got all this other overwhelming evidence of malice. What added benefit do those photos show other than inflaming the jury? And, you know, Brian, as a prosecutor, I know you may be surprised that I'm sort of agreeing with the court here because as a prosecutor, you have to be really careful. That you're not going to overplay your hand. Because if you introduce those photos, mm -hmm. yes, it makes it more likely that the jury's going to be upset and they're going to vote guilty. On the other hand, it makes it more likely that an appellate court is going to step in and overturn the conviction. So you have to be really careful before you do this. Interesting. We only have 30 seconds left, Dave. But what happens now in a case like this? I mean, does this lady just, is it like a get out of jail free card or does something else happen? No, she's going to stay in jail pending another trial. And the trial will happen and she will be found guilty. The evidence here is overwhelming. The only thing is that the prosecutors are not going to be able to use those photos against her. But as the court said, you don't need it. You got so much against this person. Her yeah. goose is cooked. She'll spend the rest of her life behind bars. Interesting. Well, Dave, thanks for coming on tonight, explaining it to us. Uh, we appreciate you as always. Thanks, Brian. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.